Now I've got a damp problem in my garage. It's very cold and very damp. And I do have a standard dehumidifier, which is the one that works with a compressor like an air conditioner and a coolant, and then blows the air over a cold matrix that's refrigerated, but they do not work in cold conditions. In cold conditions, they're more likely to freeze up, okay? So what you use instead in a cold situation, a cold, damp shed or cellar or somewhere, is a desiccant dehumidifier. And they work by having a um, a desiccant chemical on a, on a wheel, turning around, um, soaking up moisture from the air that's blown through it, and then heated up and dried out. So this one I bought for £2.90 on eBay because it was faulty, and I thought, well, I'll repair that and use it in my shed. So I've just repaired it. So I thought it might be interesting to see. It's a, uh, what model have we got? Got the Amcor, um, that one, <laughs> whatever that one is, DES8DL. And they say you can get up to seven liters of water a day. And there's a tank in the bottom, which slides out. The front's missing the front panel goes on there, but there's the tank, which just slides out. And if I just lay her on her back, one moment. Right, so there it is. And if I just, there's the filter, it's just an ordinary screen filter to screen out dust and stuff getting into the mechanism. Uh, there's a port which has got a cork. It was missing when I got it. So I've just carved up a wine cork stuffed in there. Otherwise the water run out of there rather than going into the tank. That's for a drain pipe, for a continuous drain, they call it. And quite interesting. So if I just take the lid off, you can reveal what is within. <laughs> The guts of her, as it were, you can see this is a the condenser. So the warm, moist air is blown in one end and the air is blowing over it and it just condenses in this large space. It's got plenty of time to condense and then drips out of one of these places down here on that pipe there, basically, and into the tank. It screws her out. It's, not, it's all in bits at the moment. And what was wrong with it was um, there's a small... Let me see it. Well, look at that in a minute. There's a motor that rotates this disc. This is the desiccant disc. I think it's, um, I don't think it's zeolite. I think it's calcium chloride coated disc. And you can see where it's got scorch in a couple of places where this wasn't turning when I got it. And what the problem was, was the um, central boss is just a plastic bearing into this wheel. And it had worn so much that the tiny gear that meshes on the outside all the way around the outside of here is a ring gear or a spur gear on the outside. And it engages to a Paravalux, one of those small synchronous motors, motor gearbox thing, which turns it. And because this was worn so badly, it wasn't engaging. So what I did, I turned out the center of there and made a holder for it and uh, just put a normal... Um, metal bearing in you know a, a 12 mil diameter 1224 now two quid from rs or somewhere bearing inside there so this is now on a bearing so we've got a quality bearing which is about a pound in there but the central boss had worn out stopping the disc turning and the disc stopped turning it got scorched because in here is a heater element and the air is blowing through the room air is blown through this disc as it's turning all the time and as the air goes through this absorbs moisture from the air so this is um no longer anhydrous calcium chloride, but when it reaches this chamber, there's a heater in here, which is about 220 watts, I think, judging from the power meter. And it's blowing hot air through the, the, uh, the medium and forcing the calcium chloride, which I think it is, to be forced back to anhydrous calcium chloride by evaporating off the water. So out of this port comes the warm, very moist air, which then goes into the condenser over there um, to to be condensed into water, okay? Now, there's various modes. I think there's a... I'm not sure if that's a humidity sensor. This thing down here, look. Yeah, that is a humidity sensor. RH, can you see? There's RH, IS, 6 N. That was quite fluffed up, so I've cleaned that out. So that's... Because this does automatically cut off. You've got three humidity levels you can set it to. You can also set it to a laundry mode where um, it'll just chunder away at full power to keep your laundry dry. And there's a tilt sensor. And there's other sensors, things like there's a magnetic sensor under here for hall sensor switch for a magnet in the top of the tank to make sure the tank is fitted. 
But, you know, it's a 150 quid item, this. Um, all knackered by the fact that this bo this boss in the centre of this wheel had worn out. Now, I'm, I've got concerns over the, the efficient efficacy of this now because I don't know whether this stuff ever wears out or lasts forever. But it does seem to be doing some condensing, so I'm going to run it for a while. Um, but I just thought you might be interested in... in uh, in what's inside one of these. Oh, clear, on the other side of this is just a fan blowing through, air through, so really it's just circulates as a large impeller fan on the other side, which is still in good condition. The bearings are good. So I think for £2.90 and a £1 bearing, um, I think I've got myself a desiccant humidifier. Actually, looking at this, the other thing that's interesting about this room is this here tablecloth. This is uh, a map, a map of the world. A couple of discrepancies on it but we've had it for about 10 years but the kids love it when we're listening to the news and we hear about Senegal or somewhere we can all search for it on the map and it just generally improved improved our uh, geography while we were having breakfast or meals so that's quite an interesting thing worth getting look if you zoom in on it you can see the map as it stands Anyway, so that's a desiccant dehumidifier. I'll just stand it up and turn it on, show it running, and then uh, call it a day. But I thought you might find that interesting because I didn't really know they existed until I realised that my dehumidifier wasn't working in the shed, the old refrigeration type. Yeah, I've just taken it out of the case, and you can see there's the little motor, which I had to strip down and uh, fix a bearing in there as well. But the main bearing is the one that's down in here which I've replaced with a, uh, a metal bearing. So that's all nice and tight, tight. There's the... Actually, that's a bit loose on the shaft. Look at that, I just noticed that. It's actually not screwed down properly. That could be what that rattling is. Yeah, look, <laughs> well spotted. I'm gonna tighten that down in a minute and uh, hopefully it'll run even quieter. So yeah, you've got the main impeller motor, this thing here, obviously just a, an impeller. Um, axial fan, radial fan, axial, radial. Radial fan, um, it's but it's a, one of those hamster wheel jobs. And another motor here, which is driving another fan, which is blow, doing the uh, dehumidifying uh, process. And you can see on this side, the disc looks a lot more scorched, doesn't it? I'm gonna run it for a while and just see how much liquid it gets. It may be that this disc is poisoned or not working properly, but we just don't know. And obviously the electronics are up in the lid. But there's the other heating element there on this can with a couple of components inside. I'm, I'm guessing it's not all fluffed up in there. I could take it off and have a look, but I think it should be all right. Yeah, anyway, so that's the that's the other side of her. So here it is working. If you look at this wheel, you can see closely it is turning. And then out of here is coming warm, moist air. And one thing they actually don't um, tell you is that um, a dry room with lower humidity is supposed to be healthier for you. I'm not sure about the health issues or whatever, but um, it does feel much warmer a drier room because you're not getting the evaporation from your skin and also the thermal conductivity of the air is less, so it's actually taking less heat away from your skin and your body. Um, so drier air is generally thought to be more comfortable and certainly more helpful if, sorry, healthy if it goes above a certain humidity you can get things like respiratory problems but this is also because it's got a 200 watt heater in my office it's actually um i'm going to try it as a heater and i'll let you know but um i'm fancying that it's going to be quite an effective heater in my office using low power reducing the humidity making it feel more comfortable and using the less electricity than the current one that i have but certainly I do know people that run dehumidifiers in their houses and they say oh, it cuts the heating bill quite a bit because the house feels that much warmer, it doesn't feel damp. So there's the control panel, You've got, that's laundry mode. There's three different humidity settings here. This will stop automatically when the humidity reaches a certain level. It's got this air director vent thing here and a timer so you can set it on to come on at different times. And this one's the uh, ionizer, so it's a, don't know why, it makes it, doesn't really smell like a pine forest it smells of ozone to be honest but yeah he would um an ionizer if you believe in that sort of thing all right so there it is i thought you might find that fairly interesting and you can see it chuntering away now and the fan's blowing it from the other side so i can feel a quite strong draft coming through there a desiccating 
dehumidifier dissected and I've just got to put it back together now and uh, yeah £2.90 from eBay not bad picked up locally um, I'll let you know how it goes if you want to see more then please point um, subscribe to the little button down there that would be great and yeah speak to you soon